Dear learners, I am Dr. Shalini Prasad and I welcome you to the discussion of chapter 8 of psychology textbook of class 12th that is psychology and life. Today you will be learning about human environment relationship, different views of human environment relationship, environmental effects on human behavior, human influence on the environment, noise, pollution and crowding. Today we will cover part 1. The environment influences individuals, their physical health, psychological processes and behavior and some of these effects are demonstrated in stress producing environmental conditions such as noise pollution and crowding. Social problems like aggression, violence, health and poverty are also major concern for present day psychologists. The psychological understanding of these issues can be applied practically to aspects such as pro-environmental behavior, reduction of violence and discrimination and promotion of positive health, positive attitudes and well-being of people. Let's talk about the human environment relationship. There is a growing awareness that environmental problems such as sound, air, water and soil pollution and unsatisfactory ways of garbage disposal have damaging effects on physical health. Less known is the fact that these forms of pollution influence psychological health and functioning as well. A branch of psychology called environmental psychology deals with various psychological issues pertaining to human environment interaction in a very broad sense of the term. The word environment refers to all that is around us including the physical, social, work and the cultural environment. Ecology is the study of the relationship between living beings and their environment. In psychology, the focus is on the interdependence between the environment and people. As the environment becomes meaningful with the reference to the human beings who are there. Let's talk about the natural environment. What is natural environment? That part of nature which remains untouched by the human hand is the natural environment. On the other hand, whatever has been created by the human beings within the natural environment is the built environment. For example, the cities, the houses, offices, factories, bridges, shopping malls, railway tracks, roads, dams and even the artificial created parks and ponds are some of the examples of built in environment which show how human beings have made changes in the environment given by the nature. The built environment usually involves the concept of environmental design. The idea of design contains some psychological features such as the creativity of the human mind as expressed in the works of architects, town planners and civil engineers. The sense of human control over the natural environment as shown in the building of dams to regulate the natural flow of rivers. The influence or the kind of the social interaction that takes place is the designed environment. Different views on human environment relationship. A psychologist named Stockholz describes three approaches that may be adopted to describe the human environment relationship. The first approach is the minimalist perspective. It assumes that the physical environment has minimal or the negligible influence on human behavior, their health and well-being. 
the physical environment and the human being, they exist as the parallel components. The second perspective is instrumental perspective. It suggests that the physical environment exists mainly for the use of human beings, for their comfort and their well-being. Most of the human influences on the environment, it reflects the instrumental perspective. The last perspective is spiritual perspective. It refers to the views that environment as something for the respect and valued rather than to be exploited. It implies that human beings will exist and will be happy only as long as the environment is kept healthy and natural. Traditional Indian view about the environment supports the spiritual perspective. The customs like Bishnoi community of Rajasthan and the Chipka movement in the Uttarakhand region, they are all examples to support this. By contrast, we also find examples of people damaging and destroying the environment, which is negative instance of this instrumental perspective, which is negative and should be avoided. Environmental effects on human behavior. Some of the effects pointed out by the psychologists are described. First one is the perception. For example, a tribal society of Africa lives in the circular huts, that is, in the houses without angular walls. They show less error in the geometrical illusions, especially the Mueller La illusion, than people from the cities who live in the houses with angular walls. Secondly, on emotions. Emotions. The environment affects our emotions and its reactions as well. Watching nature in any form provides a kind of joy that cannot be matched by any other experience. In natural disasters, they experience deep depression and sorrow, a sense of complete helplessness and a lack of control over their lives. They can lead to post-traumatic stress disorder. Ecological influence on occupation, the living style and the attitudes, the occupation determines the lifestyle and the attitudes of the residents of the co-cooperativeness. They are also closer to nature, more dependent on the natural environments and limited supply. On the other hand, highly industrialized societies feel less close to each other, they are less dependent on the nature. Members of the industrialized society may value independent thinking, develop an attitude of competitiveness and cultivate and value personal control over what that happens to them. Now human influence on the environment. Human beings also exert their influence on the natural environment for fulfilling their physical needs and other purposes. Some of these human actions harm and damage the environment and ultimately harm themselves in numerous ways. For example, refrigerators and air conditioners that generate CFCs that pollute the air. Smoking is known to pollute the air around us and carbon cycle and the water cycle. Industries that discharge affluence and pump this untreated sewage into rivers seems to be unconcerned about the dangerous physical and psychological consequences of this kind of pollution. Noise pollution, crowding and natural disasters are some examples of environmental stressors which are stimuli or conditions in the environment that create a stress for human beings. Let's talk about noise. What is noise? Any sound that is annoying or irritating and felt to be unpleasant is said to be a noise. Noise, especially for the long period of time, is uncomfortable and puts people in an unpleasant mood. It may lead to hearing loss. It reduces the concentration power of people. 
three characteristics of noise have been found to determine its effect on task performance namely intensity, predictability and controllability of the noise. Effects of noise, now this is a done in a very very systematic manner. Systematic researches on the effects of noise on human beings shows in the following context. When the task being performed is very simple, simple mental tasks such as additions to numbers, noise does not affect us. The overall performance is not at all affected. But if the task being performed is very interesting, then too the presence of noise does not affect the performance. When the noise comes at regular intervals and in a very unpredictable way, it is experienced as more disturbing than in the noise which is continuously coming. When the task being performed it is difficult or requires your full concentration then intense, unpredictable and uncontrollable noise reduces the level of task performance. When tolerating or switching of the noise is within the control of people, the number of errors in the task performance decreases. In terms of emotional effects, noise above a certain level causes annoyance and can also lead to sleep disturbance. Let's talk about pollution. In the form of air, water and soil pollution, we have different forms. Now waste or garbage that controls or comes from the household or from the industries are the big source of air, water and soil pollution. There are some researches or studies that have shown direct or indirect psychological effects in the forms of pollution as well. Effects of air pollution Specific psychological effects of air pollution have been reported by some researchers. For example, in one part of Calcutta, the psychological reaction to the air pollution was too much. Those living in the industries areas of industrial ones reported greater tension and anxiety than those living in the non-industrial residential areas. In the study conducted in Germany, the presence of pollution such as sulfur dioxide in the air was found to decrease the ability to concentrate on the task and lowering the performance efficiency. Pollution caused by the leaks of dangerous chemical substances can cause other kinds of harm. For example, Bhopal gas tragedy of December 1984 also left behind psychological effects because of the gas disturbances in memory, attention and alertness. Tobacco, smoking and pollution caused by tobaccos that is the pollution through cigarettes, cigar and the beery. Smoking can also cause psychological effects increasing the aggression level in the individuals. The presence of specific chemicals such as lead can cause intellectual disability by affecting the brain development. Waste and plastics, tin or any metal containers, this kind of waste material should be destroyed or burned through specific techniques and the smoke should not be allowed to escape into the air that the people breathe. Let's talk about crowding. Crowding, it refers to a feeling of discomfort because there are too many people or things around us giving us the experience of physical restriction and something of the lack of privacy. Crowding is the person's reaction to the presence of the large number of persons within a particular area or that space. When this number goes to a beyond a certain level, it causes stress to individuals caught in that situation. Now what are the features of crowding? The features of crowding? The experience of crowding has following features. It gives you a feeling of discomfort, loss or decrease of privacy, negative views of the space around us, feeling 
of loss of control over social interaction. It should be understood that experience of crowding is brought about not merely because a large number of people are there, not merely because there is a shortage of space, it is related to the density as well, that is the number of people within that available space. Crowding and high density may lead to abnormal behavior and aggression. For example, we are aware of the study of rats. Besides, these animals were placed in the enclosure initially in small numbers. As their population increased within the enclosed space, they started showing aggressive behavior, which is very unusual for them, such as biting the tails of other rats. This aggressive behavior increased in such an extent that ultimately animals died in large numbers, thus decreasing the population in the enclosure. Crowding leads to lowered performance on difficult tasks that involve cognitive processes and has adverse effects on your memory and emotional state. Children growing up in very crowded household show lower academic performance. They also show weaker tendency to continue working on the task if they are unsuccessful at it compared to the children growing in the non-crowded households. They experience greater conflict with their parents and less support from their family members. The nature of social interaction determines the degree to which an individual will react to crowding. Crowding tolerance refers to the ability to mentally deal with the high density or the crowded environment, such as the crowded residence where the large number of people within the small room are there. Competition tolerance is the ability to put up with the situation in which the individuals will have to compete with many others for the even basic resources, including the physical space. Cultural characteristics may determine the extent to which a particular environment is judged to be subjectively more crowded or less crowded. Personal space or the comfortable physical space one generally likes to maintain around oneself is affected by high density environment. In the crowded context, there is a restriction on the personal space and this can also be the cause of negative reaction to crowding. We find many examples of people responding to the physical environment in terms of space. In social situations, human beings like to maintain certain physical distance from the person with whom they are interacting. This is called the interpersonal physical distance and is the part of the broader concept called personal space. That is, the physical space we like to have all around us. One reason for the negative reaction to crowding as described earlier is the decrease in personal space. Let's have few pointers on this. Intimate distance up to 18 inches, the distance you maintain when you are talking privately to someone or interacting to a very, very close friend or a relative. Personal distance that is 18 inches to 4 feet, the distance you maintain when you are interacting one to one with the close friend relative or even with someone not very close to you in a work setting or other social interactions. Social distance 4 to 10 feet, the distance you maintain when the interaction is very formal and not very close. The public distance that is 10 feet to infinity, the distance you maintain in a formal setting where there is a large number of people around you. For example, the distance of an audience from a public speaker or a teacher in a classroom. It may be noted that these distances are maintained voluntarily. That is, keeping in mind the comfort and the experiences of the people involved in the interaction. 
The concept of personal space is important for the following reason. Firstly, it explains many of the negative effects of crowding as an environmental stressor. Secondly, it tells us about the social relationships. Thirdly, it gives us some idea about how physical space can be modified in order to reduce the stress or discomfort in the social situations or to make social interaction more enjoyable and fruitful. Today, dear learners, we have come a long way. So let's recapitulate what we have learned today. So we have learned about the human environment relationship, different views of human environment relationship, environmental effects on human behavior, human influence on the environment, the noise, pollution and crowding. Thank you.